All righty. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Jacqueline and I'm head of client success at CasePeer. Welcome to our introducing CasePeer Advanced webinar. Whether you're a potential client or looking to upgrade, we'll take the next half hour to introduce our new, newest tier of CasePeer to help streamline running your business. I'll walk through each of the features and its benefits. Please, if you have questions, ask them. There's a question bar on the right-hand side. And let's make this as interactive as possible. We have a couple of polls prepped for you. So let's go ahead and dive in. So the four features of Case Peer's advanced tier that I'll be talking about today are text scheduling, which it's just that. This feature will allow you to prep messages in advance and schedule them for any time or date. Our nightly data sync will allow fully customizable reporting and visual dashboards from platforms like Tableau or Power BI, really anything compatible with Amazon Athena. Our office reporting suite provides valuable insight into metrics across different offices or teams, as well as an extra layer of permissions and reporting. And lastly, our intake portal Streamlining intake is on everyone's mind. Uh, the feature can be used internally or externally with investigators um, to go from potential new client to retain client as quick as possible. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about text scheduling. And we have a poll here, go ahead and publish. So how often do you update a client on a case? Is the firm um, is the firm expectation once a week, every two weeks um, when they call you? Um, but we have a couple couple options here. Okay. All right, so let's see. So far, twenty three or fifty percent is every two weeks. Thirty percent is once a month and 19% is um, not sure. So uh, very cool to see those metrics. All right, so let's talk about client communication. So um, when it comes to texting, 90% of texts are read in three minutes. And there are a ton of benefits to better client communication. We know it's improved reviews it streamlined case updates. It's always faster usually to text someone rather than call them, leave a voicemail, call again. Um, and generally, um, I know for me um, specifically, if my dentist didn't text me and remind me about my appointments, hey, you have an appointment tomorrow, you have an appointment in two hours, um, it's, it's a lot more likely that I'll be on time and, and I'll get to that appointment. So, um, high response rates, um, making sure that your clients are satisfied. Happy clients are always good for business, right? Um, so let's talk a little bit of the details. And again, if you have questions, ask them at any time. Uh, Samantha is here helping me out with questions and then I'll, I'll go through more of the questions at the end as well. So um, a lot of times when it comes to cl client communication, firms can feel like they're more reactive rather than proactive. So scheduling texts can help with that, right? You're on the phone with the client. Let's say they mention they have injections next week, next Friday, right then and there, when you're making case note, of course, um, schedule a text on Friday afternoon. How did your appointment go? Um, it feels it, it feels really um, great for the client that you remembered, right? and you have that information. What if they miss that appointment? Um, we all know pain management, really important for a case. So making sure that you are kind of being one step ahead on those things. Uh, sometimes people will set a task to schedule a text or send a text later. Remember to send a text on this client's birthday. Just schedule it out. You don't have to worry about it. Um, and then all, a couple details. Once a text is scheduled, um, you can just go ahead and send it now, or you can delete it. Um, a great thing too, the text uh, correspondence will auto save to the case notes. So really nice to see that um, when you're looking through that client communication. Um, when you're using text scheduling, 
you can absolutely use our text templating. So uh, text templates, if you haven't used them or you're not familiar, you can write out um, any set of verbiage and include information from the case to autofill the client's name, autofill the case manager's name, things like that. And you can use that with the text scheduling. And then all of these dates, going back to client communication, will be uh, that date will auto update your client's last date of client communication. So you can look at that from the home tab of a case, reports, whatever that might be. And again, if you have questions, please, please ask them. So let's talk about data. And we have another poll here. How does your firm track data? Uh, I know a lot of firms will, and that might be on the, the right hand side. Some firms use Google Sheets, some firms use Excel, some firms use a reporting platform, some firms don't track, there's not specific data that they wanna track. Um, can be a combination too. So um, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at those metrics. So um, right now the front runners are Excel and other. So I said, be curious for what you're using for other. Uh, if you wanna type that in as a question, you certainly can. Um, and then, yeah, Excel is the front runner here. 45% uh, are, are using Excel. So um, let's talk metrics. Um, when you're, some firms are using data to make decisions. Other firms are kind of using gut fillings or they've been in the business long enough. Um, so case peers data sync, it really allows you to create custom reports, build dashboards, create visual graphs of key data points. Um, really the sky's the limit when it comes to reporting platforms like this. If you can, tr if you're tracking it in case peer, you can report off of it. So a uh, short list to, to, um, talk about some ways firms are currently using data sync heat map of an incident location, track whether or not litigating case, cases yields better results, um, fees collected over time, and you could specify it by different attorneys or different teams, um, trend reports for settlements over time, especially like think if you're chain, making changes in marketing that could impact your settlements over time, a heat map of where cases are coming from from a marketing perspective, heat map of jurisdiction, jurisdictions where you're litigating, uh, number of intakes over the years, uh, cases by source type, referral type, you make a graph, um, and then costs, know where you're spending money, uh, the most money, and is that yielding better settlements? So um, how does this work? What are the details here? Um, when it comes to utilizing reporting tools such as uh, Tableau, Power BI, uh, the nightly data sync will help you battle better analyze your data in one space. Last poll, we had a lot of people that were in Excel and something else, right, uh, to track their metrics. And even I know myself, I, I have other multiple platforms I'm looking at metrics in for the team. So this can really help you visualize performance, plan for the future, forecast fees. Um, everybody wants to know where money is coming from, right? Um, but basically, um, your data, your firm's data will be hosted with Amazon's web service in an S3 bucket. And then from there, you could use a platform like Amazon Athena to query your data and use with anything that's compatible with that. So if there's a platform you prefer over one or the other, you can use that. Um, most firms will, um, use a developer that's familiar with S3 buckets, but, um, from what I've seen, say, working in Tableau, it's fairly user-friendly as, as far as building building out information. So um, questions, comments, please, please go ahead and add those in. We have two more features to go over. So our next one here is our office reporting suite. And our next poll question here is, how often are you reporting on team or office performance? So we'll go ahead and publish that there. All right. Let's see where we're at. Um, right now, our front runner at 32% is rarely, 
and 31% at weekly, 24% at monthly, and um, 10% or 14% at quarterly. So very cool to see the metrics of when people are looking at that, that information there. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in. Um, there's so much I can say about office reporting. So it really is a sophisticated feature, whether you're a single location firm or a nationwide firm, there are a ton of benefits that stem from using this feature. Um, this reporting suite scales with your law firm to help offer better insights into metrics across offices or teams. You can compare uh, performance across your organization or forecast fees or limit the, the view of certain attorney or staff on reports by the office or team they're assigned on. Um, it is meant to be to give you the option of that 10,000 foot view. What is this office or team working on? Um, and even, for example, from, say, a, a financial perspective, it might not um, you can use these metrics to see um, you know, what team is most lucrative, or maybe there's a location of an office that it doesn't make sense to have a San Francisco office, or there's a team that has double the amount of settlements than the other team, and they might deserve a bonus. So um, let's take a look at actually, uh, this screenshot here is showing that you can filter by different office or teams on all the reports. Uh, but the next one's one of our, one of our dashboards. So uh, basically here, these is breaking down the different offices, uh, but it's, it is totally customizable as far as how you want to set up your offices or teams. So we have three dashboards that are pre-built for your team. Uh, we want you to easily track the cases your firm is signing up versus closing out, compare settlement numbers, whether it's outstanding demands or fees in for this month or this year. Um, and the way it works is you assign a team or an office to each case. And then from there, every report and management screen will be filtered by that information. So um, this applies to the case search log log the case search logic. Um, so each person on a specific team or case would only see the cases on reports or the search that they should be seeing based on their role. Um, and then and then from there, like I said, you can really customize how you want to look at this data. So. One firm maybe will have a sales for San Francisco as their office, and then they could have John and Tessa as the teams. Or I've seen firms set it up where they have a California office and then a San Francisco team and a San Diego team. Or even, um, you know, they have, the Cal they have a San Francisco team, and then within that team, they could have individual teams. So... Uh, very customizable as far as how you want to look at your data. Every firm is structured a little bit differently. Um, so if you're a firm that's looking to expand, it's easy because you can set the right permissions so people in different offices don't see cases they shouldn't see. Um, and it's bifurcated automatically. Um, and a new feature actually that's coming out for this is the ability to sign templates. So uh, automated letter generation by office or team. So you can make sure that if some some offices say you're in different states, your workers comp information is different or your letterhead is different, you can set it up. So the right templates are generating for the right offices and teams. So um, you assign each person or team to those permissions. So uh, really kind of setting the standard as far as the way we're looking at permissions and this information. So let me know if you have any questions on this. Our next up, we have our intake portal. So time for another poll. Um, let's go ahead and so what um, what tools are you using for intake? So um, this is a multi-select, so if you're doing a couple different things, uh, go ahead and take a look there. <coughs> um, right now our front runner is phone at 43%. Pen and paper is 23%. Intake software is 19 and a website chat is 12%. So uh, really, really cool to see that most, most firms are taking the intakes right from, right from the phone. All right, so let's talk intake. Uh, my guess is most of you firms here are have some sort of marketing spend. And uh, when it comes to intake, we know every minute makes a difference. 
if someone is injured and they're looking for an attorney, if they call your firm and you don't answer, they're already calling the next person on Yelp and you and or Google, right? Um, so we want to make sure those processes are being streamlined. We want to make sure it's easy to collect data, whether you're meeting a new person, a new client in person or over the phone. Um, this platform is really nice because law firms can invite external investigators or intake specialists to complete intake packets for clients without giving them access to the rest of CaseBeer. So um, we wanted something that was secure to collect documents and photos all in one place. And then not only are we tracking these intake packets on a case level, you can see it from a firm level and what, out, what packets are outstanding, which are currently being completed. So uh, let's see what this, what this intake looks like. Um, you'll see here at the top, there are different tabs. So as you add in the information and you click on the, the tabs, it will automatically save this intake for you. So uh, the amazing thing here is your case beer contact. So you're adding the client's insurance will pull into drop down. So you don't need to recreate the will just, or your intake team or your investigator doesn't need to re-enter any of these contacts, they can go in and um, pull from what you already have. So your police departments, um, your health insurance, we, again, want to make sure we're not wasting time. We're getting this process completed as quickly as possible. So once an intake packet is completed, the firm, they can review the data and then process that information to the case um, after it's been reviewed. Um, you can use our e-signature functionality with this as well. So text or email, client retainer, CFA. Uh, that way that saves automatically to the case as well. Uh, but this is a really neat feature. Um, I'm, I'm excited that, that we've released it. And um, this is something that you don't have to be an investigator to use, right? If you prefer this intake platform over the, our intake setup, use this one instead. Um, you can give permissions based on who can who can see this or use this for your case peer team. Um, and definitely let us know if you've got questions on, on this as well. Um, all right. Well, let's see. I want to be mindful of y'all's time. So let's, uh, we just have a couple more slides here, um, or I guess our next, and we have our next and final poll. Um, which case peer advanced feature is most interesting to you? So text scheduling, data sync, or the intake portal. And that one will be over on the right. Um, when it pops up here. So, so far, 50% um, at text scheduling and, oh, you know, 45 for text scheduling, 39% for intake portal, 6% for office reporting suites and 7% um, for data sync, fluctuating a little bit, but text text scheduling is, is holding steady at 44%. Uh, so. Um, wonderful. So um, let's talk about investigating in tools to run a better business. Um, we do recommend firm training sessions to successfully implement features like this, uh, but also it can be better. It can be beneficial to identify any other functionality that your firm might not be using to its full percentile within CasePeer. And these review sessions are always a excuse me, always an option for any firm using CaseBeer. So we always want to make sure you're getting the most out of our product. Um, we can talk metrics that are important to the firm um, and anything that's a feature or integration that you might not be using or anything that feels inefficient. So um, if you have questions here, certainly let us know. Um, some of the questions I get are, you know, can I downgrade? Yes, anytime. Um, the billing is prorated, and then all users will need to be on the same tier of CaseBeer. Um, and lastly, a couple uh, couple updates. If using CaseBeer Advanced is something that's interesting to you, we have an implementing CaseBeer Advanced webinar next week, Tuesday, August 29th. That's at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And we'll get the link posted in the chat to register for that if you'd like to register it. Um, if you're not using CaseBeer and you're interested in using CaseBeer, at least taking a look at it, there's a link to book a demo of CaseBeer. And then uh, for everyone else, um, for a current client, we'll post our phone number and our email. So reach out at any time with CaseBeer. Support is unlimited. Training's unlimited. The chat is our real people. So you're not talking to a bot. Um, 
And I do want to make sure we got through everyone's questions before I sign off here. And if we haven't gotten to everyone's questions, we'll make sure to get to you. So um, let me just take a look at those real quick here. Um, let's see some questions about text cat, um, text scheduling. We have some other cool, um, features in the work for text scheduling when it comes to working them into case plan or automated tasks. So, um, definitely, uh, something really exciting to look forward to. It is something a firm admin would need to grant, um, Someone's asking about uh, data sync. That will happen each night automatically. Don't need to do anything um, there. When it comes to texts, yes, the texts that are scheduled will automatically save to case notes. Um, is this a different intake portal? Yes, um, we there's a, a current version of intake in case peer that's available to everyone. This portal is a little bit different in the way that data saves. Um, so it does look a little bit different. Yes. Um, let's see, is the intake packet customizable? No, the basic fields are here. Um, and again, we want to make sure that this intake is uh, not cumbersome to complete or too lengthy. Uh, so just getting the right amount of information, decide whether or not it's a good case to take, and then moving forward. Um, let's see. Other questions? Great questions. Um, the intake packet. Um, this would be something that the law firm or an investigator fills out, not the client. Um, where do you access the intake packet? There'll be a separate URL for it with its own management screen based on permissions. All right. Um, let's see, can we track how long each team takes to move from intake to demand and demand to settlement? Yes, use the case status report. Let's see, can you go over how to generate act actual templates? Anybody that's not using templates, this is the best use of time for your team. We have a template webinar for beginning templates, advanced templates. If you need help, we will get on a screen share with you. This is an incredible way to save hundreds of hours, make sure there's consistency, make sure everyone's using the right version of documents. Um, so definitely utilize our resources. The bottom right of CaseBeer is a direct link to our help center. So um, that is definitely in there. Um, do we need to be on case Bear advanced to, uh, to access the office feature? Yes, any of the features that I talked about today are part of the case Bear advanced tier um, that only a firm admin could has the permissions to upgrade. Um, how do you calendar text so it's automated? Um, that'll there's a great help article on that and uh, but basically there's a checkbox and you choose the date and time. Uh, um. Uh, good questions on data, um, on uh, the data sync. So uh, we will sync over every field of your cases to an S3 bucket, which is hosted by AWS, Amazon. And then you're, then you can use those uh, bucket credentials to sync over to a platform um, that's compatible with Amazon Athena. And then from there, um, if you want to build different reports or, um, usually firms will use a developer that's familiar with S3 buckets, and um, that way you can build different reports, link those together, make them into dashboards. Uh, I've seen some really some really neat information that you can you can get from the data that you're already collecting on a day to day. All right, um, let's see. Is this recorded? Yes, you'll record a. a you will receive a recording and you can watch it at your leisure or share it with whoever you like. Um, let's see. Mm. All right, looks like we've got some new questions at the top. And again, I know we haven't answered everybody. Samantha's helping me answer, and I'm going to read out um, some of the other ones. 
Is case per advance an additional cost? Yes, it's 129 per user per month and everybody needs to be on the same tier of case peer. Um, can we can we send out the intake um, in case beer for the client to fill out? You can use our client intake form if you want something that's client facing. The intake portal I showed you is internal. And the client intake form, that's available to everybody now. Um, let's see. Um, guidebook that explains all technology in case beer. Yes, visit our help center. Um, it is as literally a thousand articles. So um, really great resources for anything that you want to search there. Um, there's a question about texts. Um, unfortunately, we're not able to send texts that are sent in real time to case notes, but anything that's scheduled can be saved to case notes. All right. Um, when are these features available? They're already available. Case Beer Advanced is live. And if your firm chooses, you can upgrade and, and make that investment um, whenever you like. Um, if you do upgrade, I recommend a training session or sessions, depending on what features you'd like to use. Um, let's see. Will you be implementing a mass text feature? Uh, that's not something that's in the pipeline. Um, the way we opt clients in for text preserves the texting capabilities. You might know that there's a lot of new laws um, from the TCPA going on. Uh, a lot of it has to do with the election and all the mass texts we know everyone gets. Uh, but we want to make sure we preserve our, our texting capabilities and phone numbers. So that's not something that we have in our pipeline right now. Um, all right. I think we've got most of them. Feel free to hang on. Um, if your question didn't get answered, I'll review and make sure that we've gotten everyone. But thank you all so much for joining today. Um, I'm happy to teach you about case beer. And as a reminder, implementing case beer advanced is next week. Uh, if you're not a case beer user, book a demo. Um, but other than that, I look forward to seeing you all next time. Have a great day.